Hi everybody and welcome to this new lesson. So in this lesson we will learn about the uh, DSM configuration uh, and the uh, log integration into uh, QReader. So this document from QReader uh, named the DSM configuration guide is an essential document that uh, every uh, IBM QReader administrator or uh, professional service who is implementing solution should have this document and uh, uh, it's uh, recommended that you have the latest one the latest one is October 2022 so uh, it's just released uh, in the in this month okay so it's very big document it's 1570 pages it's, it's actually divided into uh, chapters so you will uh, find a chapter for each and every uh, solution or uh, technology uh, so for example if you scroll down here chapter I remember chapter 30 is uh, blue coat you see chapter 30 is blue coat so uh, each chapter uh, focus on one uh, main technology and it provides you with the uh, configuration parameters the DSM configuration parameters for uh, uh, integrating the log source into curator uh, actually for each uh, log source there is something called rbm file so for example blue code uh, requires this dsm uh, file uh, or this rbm file the rbm is nothing but a, a parser that can read the logs the blue code log, uh, logs in this case and uh, Parses uh, the log, uh, extract the URL, for example, the uh, bytes in, bytes out, the, the uh, not bytes in, bytes out, like the yes, the downloaded the bytes, the uploaded bytes, the hit uh, if it's a hit or cache, you know, the this kind of things uh, inside the proxy uh, log. This is the parsing and then normalizing, uh, which means mapping it to. Uh, uh, the uh, event schema of uh, curator uh, also it's telling you what protocols you can use like syslog or log file so either you uh, configure blue code to send the logs to curator uh, okay so push mechanism or uh, curator will pull the logs from the blue code so it's log file protocol okay so in this lesson we will uh, not focus on blue code I will uh, show you different uh, technologies where we will integrate using syslog for one example and uh, another example using log file okay uh, actually the log file example we will focus on non-standard or uh, non-supported version uh, or technology by uh, curator and this will require for us to develop uh, DSM for it so we need to make a custom DSM uh, development okay so returning back uh, to the guide as I told you each chapter focus on uh, one uh, technology okay uh, some chapters at the beginning talking about uh, log source management uh, log source extensions and log so source extensions is uh, you add some uh, extra attributes like the extra processor in in uh, arc site you add extra uh, regular expression or something to an existing dsm uh, so you can uh, extract more uh, values so uh, it is uh, can extend the extension document it's called extension document so this extension document can extend or modify how the elements of a particular log source are parsed so you either extend or override uh, the current uh, parser okay so returning ba back uh, to uh, this uh, DSM okay it, it, the DSM is different from version to version of curator so uh, this for example here it's just a, a variable but uh, actually you have to download the latest uh, RBM for your case you don't need to manually uh, download if you have the automatic upload already enabled so if you come here 
uh, in the system configuration you have the automatic update if the automatic update is already uh, configured you have bro your proxy settings or your internet uh, uh, is working fine so uh, you, you you will get this updates automatically okay so most of the time you don't need to uh, download but some cases uh, for example if you are in air gapped environment or uh, you are using uh, some technology that is not automatically detected by uh, curator so in that case uh, you need to make this uh, manually okay so for example here if you check this uh, chapter it's talking about adding or manually installing an rbm so i'll just come to it okay so yeah this one so adding a dsm so if your device is not automatically discovered manually install a dsm so simply you go to the ibm support website and download the relevant rbm that uh, is corresponding to your technology like for example windows so you go and write text windows or something and then you will get the rbm you download it and then just make yum minus y install the rbm file name and then uh, you connect to the admin tab here uh, you will notice some yellow screen or yellow uh, notification that there is uh, rbm installed so you make deploy a change uh, deploy changes and and note that installing uh, you can install but you cannot uninstall okay um, okay so let's i have here some 40 gate firewall i have a lab actually i just i will just expl explain the lab and then i will proceed with the cases actually we have two main cases the first case uh, is uh, to integrate the 40 gate firewall into curator this is the uh, will be automatically detected by curator and it's uh, simple uh, it's a piece of cake the other one is bit tough where we will need we need to integrate curator with next sync next sync is it and user analytics i have a dedicated course for next sync called next sync from zero to hero i encourage you guys to check it out uh, so uh, next sync is very powerful uh, monitoring uh, solution um, for uh, end user uh, end points uh, desktops uh, laptops and also for servers uh, and uh, it allows you to uh, remediate the your uh, the day-to-day -day issues that uh, the users are facing on their uh, desktops or laptops so it enhance the digital experience of the users in your environment okay so if we want to integrate curator with nextsync if you come here and search for nextsync there is no evidence at all yani i will leave this searching for in the nothing okay so this is a custom integration uh, we need to explore uh, the options from next thing to integrate curator the best option is to use syslog it's much easier if you next thing can provide syslog to curator uh, however biz, uh, as bear my uh, experience the syslog integration of next thing into curator is just providing the alerts that next thing generate so for some uh, customers this is not enough to just receive the alerts the because I, as i told you it's a monitoring solution it can give you very detailed information like the connections running the activities everything uh, and i just need to know everything about uh, the connections the activities the binaries everything inside the environment I, uh, not just the alerts so in that case the syslog will not be able to help you and you need to use the api of next thing so this will be the second case where we will continue will connect to the api of next thing and uh, get the logs and then develop the uh, parser and the dsm for that okay so this is my lab simply 
this is the screenshot from the my network status so this is my laptop it's connected to a network bridge and the network bridge connected to the internet so actually my ethernet uh, on this laptop i have two connections one to the uh, wi-fi which connects me to the internet and the other one is ethernet so this is the ethernet cable to my curator server okay um so i'm bridging here because as you know guys if you connect the ethernet over the wi-fi uh, the the ethernet takes precedence and this will make uh, my uh, my laptop isolated from internet and also the curator server so to get around this i i configured uh, a nice option in windows called network bridge so where i bridged the ethernet adapter uh, of the uh, of uh, the curator uh, of uh, my uh, laptop and the Wi-Fi so this bridge actually provide me the, the the opportunity to get internet access for my laptop and for curator so curator is coming like this and then go to uh, the internet also I have uh, uh, the VMware uh, player on my laptop so VMNet, I have VMNet 8 and VMNet 1. VMNet 8 also added to the network bridge. So, uh, and uh, so this allowed, and VMNet 1 is not in the, uh, in the bridge. So, uh, it's ho just a host, uh, yani providing host connectivity, while this uh, is providing, uh, like getting internet connectivity. So, net connectivity okay so uh, i have 40 git firewall here have two interfaces one in the same subnet so this is network bridge so this ip this ip this ip in the same subnet this one in different subnet and behind the firewall we have the next sync and we have the uh, windows uh, 10 this is a pc uh, running windows 10 connecting just to generate some traffic for the 40 git uh, firewall when we integrated with curator we can see we can see uh, uh, relevant logs okay so now let me uh, show you the uh, firewall rules that i have configured to allow the communication between curator and next sync and also to provide internet access for the windows 10 so basically uh, we have here port 2 for so for windows 10 to make uh, uh, communication to the internet i need to configure one rule from port 2 to port 1 and then it uh, will connect to the internet so this is the 40 gate firewall so uh, coming here this is my firewall policy where i have this rule and i called it internet from port 2 from port 2 to port 1 i have enabled everything all all always all and uh, here uh, is the uh, rule configured okay and uh, the netting is enabled because uh, this ip is not routable so i need to uh, make source netting using this ip so any uh, one on the internet can respond back and then the fortigate will manage to deliver it okay for the next thing to connect to curator i i need to in this direction actually curator is pulling the logs so let me write this so uh, curator is uh, pulling the logs from next thing uh, so uh, i need to open from port 1 to port 2 so from port 1 to port 2 so this is the curator next thing integration and actually uh, this ip is not uh, uh, known for the system it's not routable and that's why i make here uh, one net IP uh, let me write it here it's 192.168.1.226 which maps actually to 192.168.5.5 so this is the 
source netting happening okay so let's make it like this so actually uh, we are connecting uh, when curator speaks to next sync it connect to 192.168.1.226 it's just a virtual ip created on the vmnet 8 uh, which is port 1 and then uh, this translates to the ip of next sync okay and also there is source netting taking place here so the response can take place so you can see here the netting is enabled and we have here the next sync public ip which is as i explained it's translating the uh, 192.168.1.226 to 192.168.5.5 Okay, so basically these are the two uh, rules on the firewall that will enable the integration and also will provide the internet access for this guy. Okay, uh, remaining now is to enable logging for this rule because mainly we need to send the logs uh, of the Windows 10. Uh, whatever uh, access to the internet, we need to send it to Curator. We don't care about the logs for the integration between Curator and Nexing, so that's why this I will not enable. I will leave it the default. So this is the default option. UTM means that if there is a unified threat management, so if there is some uh, antivirus uh, detected, something like this, so uh, it will not detect all. Uh, it will not log every. It will not log every uh, thing. So to log everything for this, uh, for the internet, so we need to change this and make it all apply. And then we come to the system, uh, sorry, uh, come to the log and report and select uh, log settings. And then come here. So by default, the uh, FortiGate is storing on the local disk. So we can uh, enable here, send to logs to syslog and I add here the IP of curator and then press apply so before doing that let's go to the uh, log activity okay and then enable uh, here apply so oh, event logging all all of this will be enabled so if you need to customize you can check out some of them so all of them will be enabled and this is a local traffic so like log local out traffic no need to enable uh, every uh, local traffic log so local traffic means that the traffic destined from uh, to the firewall or originated from the firewall so no need to uh, uh, log this one this is like someone telnet to the firewall some uh, someone being the firewall or uh, you being from the firewall so it's uh, yani not relevant for us but this one is the one relevant event logging like the traffic logging like the windows is uh, passing by the firewall to connect to the internet i need this log this is the important so i press apply and then and then check here the log activity so as usual we have here the filter our default filter which exclude the non uh, system logs or non internal system logs so if we go to the um, if we go to this uh, Windows machine, so for example, here I'm opening the IBM X Force, so I'm just refreshing to get more data. So it start logging, and we should start seeing more logs. And you can see here, this I think the IB is for the X Force. You can see here. Uh, traffic start to come so it's very simple integration as you can see and if you want to check the uh, settings for the log source in more detail not just the um, not just the uh, GUI because as you can see the GUI is very limited however if you want to check more details uh, you can go for the CLI okay and uh, for the 40 gate and we can uh, issue some useful uh, command about uh, the log i think show log system syslog 
daemon setting so you can see here this is just uh, the same thing almost that we see here that we enable and we put the IP but if you want to see the full configuration you can uh, first go to uh, the same thing but this time config uh, syslog setting and then show the full configuration so you can see here more details not just the first two lines but we have here the mode udb so you can change it to tcp <clears throat> you can change the port facility source ip if you need to uh, like uh, spoof the source ip the format is the default and the priority and the maximum log uh, rate and the interface so um, i think the main thing here is this one so if you want to check the format this is the most relevant so the default syslog format is the one chosen so you can change it to csv or ceph for uh, integrating to uh, like arc site or rfc 5424 this is the syslog uh, rfc format so the one here default one was working uh, for us because we were able to see the logs as we can see here actually you can also check can check check the dsm guide as usual so if we come here and uh, check for uh 40 gate okay i think it's shop or 65 okay so here you can see the um the different parameters and uh supported versions and here this works for actually 40 gate and the 40 analyzer so one single dsm making parsing for the 40 gate and the 40 analyzer and this is the rpm name so you can verify that the rpm is uh, there on your system and it should be there because we can see the logs are parsed fine so if we come to the uh, here to the rpm uh, to the curator uh appliance you can use this command rbm minus qa and put the name uh or part of the name here check so this is the one available so you can see uh it's it's uh, the uh, right one you can check uh, over the portal if there is 7.5 but since we have the auto updates i, I believe that this is the latest version available okay and the protocols syslog syslog we already used and there is a syslog redirect i think this is for the analyzer and uh here uh, values that are required 40 net, for 40 net 40 analyzer uh, you uh, you have to uh, actually this is the uh, another uh, tricky thing in in curator that some log sources despite you have the dsm you have everything uh, you have to manually add the log source so if you want to receive events from fortinet analyzer manually add the log source for the protocol configuration type select syslog redirect and then configure the parameter so actually we will do this for the second exercise uh, which is integrating the next thing we will add everything manually okay so still for some uh, uh, log sources that are uh, supported out of the box which means that you have the rbm available or the dsm available still you need to manually add the log source and the reason behind this is that the the parser is written in a way that it is not able to automatically detect so so there are some cases where the uh, le uh, let's say certain patterns available in the logs after like 20 30 logs are received the 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 parser will be able to automatically or intellig intelligently detect however for other parsers it requires you to add the log source and uh, actually you put some log source identifier which will tell the parser that this uh, you will make this configuration inside the uh the protocol uh, the log source that, that you will add you you will make some protocol configuration parameters 
like the syslog uh, redirect here in the case of forty analyzer and also uh, you will make this uh, collection uh, parameters event collection parameters like the device the log source identifier is like device name and this regular expression and the listening port and protocol okay so this is very uh, common thing in curators that you need to manually add and that's why this guide is something that should be opened with you all the time while doing implementation uh, because um, you don't need to waste time and wait why the logs are not parsed here everything is written for you either things are should be detected automatically or you need to add it uh, manually okay so the next case which will take uh, more time for, for, uh, for sure is to get the logs from the next thing okay so next thing is not supported out of the box as we said so we have to check the uh, documentation for this the uh, like uh, if if it has a api or something and if we checked next thing fortunately have an api web api where you can connect to the uh, engine uh, ip address engine is one of the core components of the next thing and to the web api port which is 1671 and this is like a postman wh where you can test your query so actually this is the 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 thing this is the ip of my next sync instance okay and i connect as per the web api as per the documentation sorry to slash uh, to colon 1671 slash to slash uh, query or this editor so here you can type the select statement that will retrieve actually this is a connection directly to the database of next thing uh, to get the logs that you are looking for so here i'm retrieving the uh, all the connection uh, they, ha they have a connection table okay uh, actually everything is explained here in the tutorial this is not this beyond the course of uh, curator uh, however uh, in the normal implementations when you have custom applications like this one so considering next thing is a custom application it's yes it's uh, off the shelf it's in the market but still from the curator point of view or perspective it's 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 custom application so i need to sit with the system admin of uh, next thing and discuss with him the integration points or any custom application what is the integration points and uh, actually the integration points uh, for next thing is syslog as i said but it's not providing the full visibility and the web api which you can just trigger the uh, can query the database directly and get whatever you are looking for so here i'm looking for all the connections between uh, in the last hour okay and i'm ascending uh, ascend in ascending order so this is the time uh, as you can see so time increases and i'm getting the incoming traffic and the outgoing traffic something like this okay so to get the uh, this uh, the link to this uh, to the results you have here either csv H H uh, html xml json so for example we will take the json and then we can put inside a script so here actually on the next thing server uh, itself I have enabled some uh, the, some some FTP server. So actually, the just to update the diagram here, we will have FTP server running. Okay, and inside this FTP, so I will show you that the, there is FTP here running. So uh, there is a FTP. Uh, sorry, um, test user. I enable test user okay so you you just download the package rbm package for uh, for uh, any uh, linux ftp server uh, and and uh, configure a test user and uh, so you can use it as the ftp uh, server for curator so curator will connect to this ftp server okay so in my case 
uh, I just make it on the same server the next thing server but in production for sure you'll not uh, touch the next thing so you, you 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 may have some other server uh, here okay FTP server so next thing just write the logs on it but for our case I make it on the same server so and the test user test user and then the password that I configured so now I am connected so basically uh, uh, you can configure uh, an FTP server on the uh, on the appliance itself or on any other uh, external server and this is the the path where I will configure or uh, put the logs okay so here is the path okay for the logs okay so we have here one script the script is next.shell so if we look at the script together so the script basically is making wget get to this is actually guys if you check here this is the uh, the URL that I got from here so here I just copy link address so I just put it at the end for you so this is the URL you can see it here this one till this one Okay, so this is just I take as a copy from here. So this is like a postman for the next thing uh, query language, the NQ, uh, NQL for next thing. I just tested with my with the system admin for sure. You don't need to be an expert in next thing. You will sit with the custodian of next thing or the system admin, and together you uh, will you will work with him to write the 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 select statement that will get the data you want like setting with oracle administrator or like uh, my sql uh, server admi administrator or any custom application and write together you write the uh, select statement so basically you will tell him i need the log the authentication logs i need the connection logs i need the activity logs whatever uh, the application will provide you will uh, write the select statement for it maybe he will create for you some view inside this application and then you will write the statement and find a way to get the link to this uh, select statement so here I just put the the link okay and I'm exporting with the format as JSON so I will just cancel this one open it again so we know this part okay we know this part okay so that part it's just the wget normal unix to uh, uh, utility and uh, here i'm not checking any certificate here's the username and password it's hard coded inside the script of the next thing itself same thing when i put here okay and then uh, the output document will be this file name so actually this the connection dash and this is the day month year hour minute second dot json so actually uh, here i'm just uh it's bash script so here i'm issue the command date and getting the uh, the year here i'm getting the months day hour month second and then concatenate all, all of this inside the name of the file so every time there is one file generated okay and then finally i'm uh, just uh, make a cat or like echoing the, the content of the file and pipeline to this trim which replaces the uh, this uh, uh, opening um, paraneath and replace it with some with a new line and then uh, uh, adding this into this file which is connection multi line dot json again with the variable so why why are doing this let's see first uh, let's see first the content of this file so if we if we check here so actually we are retrieving the data and write it here and then converting into multi-line so why we are doing this because next thing when it returns the data it's all coming in the same line so you see here 
it's just one line however it's actually 100 as per the query it's 100 records okay so this is just one line and next and the curator uh, needs one line bare uh, bare uh, log okay so or needs one line for every log yes so uh, uh, to get around this I just replaced the starting delimiter which is this one this is the starting delimiter of each log so doing this this will give you the uh, um, this will give you uh, the file this one okay so if we cut this one uh, yes it just break the one line into uh, multiple uh, lines okay so now we need to uh, configure the curator side to connect to this path and uh, so I will stop the logs for the firewall just to um, avoid confusion with the logs of uh, curator uh, with uh, next thing okay so simply we can come here and we go to the same uh, log settings page but this time I will disable okay so we just reduce the amount of logs we are getting so to configure the log sources uh, first thing you need to do is to add a log source log source type okay so you have different types like blue code like ASA like Palo Alto so we need to add a log source so if you come here to the data sources okay you will find here uh, actually uh, you find here DSM editor so if we open the DSM editor this is the development kit for developing a new uh, uh, log source or new DSM. So the first step uh, for uh, DSM development is to create a new log source type. So let's create a custom new type. Let's name it like this. Okay, the custom new type one. Okay, and save. Uh, cancel now you, you close the DSM editor we will return to it uh, back when we finish the log source so now we need to create the log source so first we created a log source type now we need to create the log source this will allow the logs to come and then we will return to the DSM editor to make the parsing okay so log sources and then you will make a new log source single log source and then you will search for the uh, log source type we'll select it and then select the protocol type we will select log file okay and then configure log source parameters here we give a name we can give the same name or let's name it something relevant to us next thing it end user analytics okay enabled uh, description enabled the log will be enabled if you want to add to a group this is the extension if you have a log source extension uh, as I told you to extend the log uh, the parser but now we are creating from scratch so no need English will be the language uh, target event collector will be the one hosted on the all-in-one appliance this connected log collector if you are having air gapped environment and you have some disconnected log collector in the environment uh, which capture uh, collect the logs and then re uh, send it to the uh, the to the data center or the headquarter or whatever so this is not the case credibility we can increase make it nine because we trust the next thing logs for example Oh, okay you can you need to select like this okay and then coalescing uh, events means aggregation if you want to aggregate the events so disable it because uh, we don't need to aggregate we need uh, one by one log and then storing the event payloads uh, always leave this for compliance then configure the now we finish the protocol type we need the uh, sorry we need uh, we finish the the uh, log source parameters configuration the log source parameters we need to configure the protocol parameters 
so any identifier you put for the you can put the the ip of uh, next thing because since we have netting and the logs are coming and then, uh, the source uh, is netting so we can put here the ip and we will select secure file transfer remote ip or host name will be the uh, the net ip so here i will put the net ip because i don't have reachability from curator to the 5.5 so i put the 1.2.2.6 192.168.1.226 and as we explain this will be netted to 5.5 and then the remote port is 22 this is secure file transfer uh, the remote user is uh, is the ftp user as we showed to you guys here that I am connecting actually uh, using this test user okay and the password will uh, you have to put it as well and then uh, if you have uh, SSH key file this is not mandatory leave it remote directory what is the remote directory so if we come here this will be the remote directory as we also explained here okay so we'll put it here next is the uh, file uh, ftp file bat so the file pattern uh, will be dynamic because if you remember guys the script is generating a file name uh, it's not a constant file name actually it's uh, it's uh, dynamic so here connection and add it to it the variable day month year so every time the file name will be different so the name pattern will be this one we can put like this but we will remove all of this and put uh, like dot asterisk remember that when we talked about the regular expression so dot means any letter and then asterisk so this will be uh, the pattern uh, and recurrence uh, will be uh, the minimum you can choose is 15 uh, minute so if you check here the minimum value is 15 uh, minutes so we uh, will schedule this script uh, actually I scripted it uh, scheduled it already so we can see here the schedule is like every 15 minutes I'm writing uh, I'm executing this uh, script okay so so here remaining for us run on save means that uh, the uh, upon uh, saving uh, the script or the uh, the protocol uh, the log source will start to uh, process download immediately the file and process it this is if you want to b uh, put some threshold or throttle on the uh, eps just to limit the uh, eps for that source if it's very heavy uh, ignore previously processed file this is uh, uh, important to avoid reading the same log file again and here the event generator uh, the default is line by line most of the time you will find line by line has the option chosen so if you just search for this inside the dsm most of the log sources here for example this is aix it's using again log file protocol one of the options and one of the option is syslog but but if you use log file protocol so line by line will be using uh, used and this means that the file if the file has 10 lines of text it will mean uh, 10 separated events if you go to another example here is this is um another one look this is the general explanation of the look so uh, the different parameters of the log source uh, file log file uh, pr uh, protocol so line by line is the recommended here and you are done now so we can go and test the protocol parameters so we can start test so this is very important a testing dns if you would qualified name testing the connection testing the secure file transfer connection validating the remote directory make sure that at least you have one uh, file is there and then at the end it will tell you if it's able to capture some uh, logs so here it was able to capture some log logs so you are good so finish 
and then here the log is created so the log source type is custom new log uh, new type one uh, important one important step is to go to the admin where uh, you need to deploy the changes so if you check here you will see that a new uh, log source is added so we need to deploy this change and uh, without deploying the change uh, the log source will not be in act in in uh, process or uh, it will be like inactive so we need to make the uh, change deployment and then uh, the remaining part will be to develop the the parser itself to again open the dsm editor and start parsing the logs and extracting the relevant fields and so the parsing or the dsm development is two parts uh, where the first thing is to create the different uh, uh, regular expressions for each and every attribute that we need to extract from the logs and uh, this will actually start to uh, qualify the log to be parsed but until you make the mapping uh, to some event ID then you will complete the parsing so let's uh, uh, wrap uh, together the, the different steps so first thing we did for development of custom parser is what the first thing is to create a log source after we created uh, to create sorry a log source type after we created a log source type which was custom uh, uh, log uh, one new one uh, we then go to the uh, log sources to create uh, a new log source so first we created log source type then we create a log source okay and uh, so from the dsm editor we opened it and we created a log source type which is custom new log one and then we open the log source uh, where we uh, configure the different parameters like we, uh, we connect using sftp to a remote server this is the path uh, for uh, for the server and uh, this is the schedule for connection this is the credentials uh, we so we shows the 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 we shows the log file as a protocol for sure you have different uh, log uh, so log, uh, log protocols uh, like uh, gdbc if you are connecting to a database or uh, other things like secure copy if you want to just co connect and copy uh, the file okay so uh, again i'm uh, wrapping up so this m editor to uh, this is the first step this m editor to create a new log source type okay we make this where we created actually the uh, custom new uh, log uh, one if you remember guys custom new type one okay and then we close this and we go to the log sources and from the log sources we create uh, select the log sources and then we create a new log source uh, saying a log source and we uh, just search for custom uh, this one custom new type we go there and then we select log file and then we started to configure the log source parameters the name the description okay the collecting and then we put any identifier we select the protocol you have ftp you have other things okay and you remember all of this like the director and everything i just return back to here where you can select other types not log file gdbc for connecting to oracle for example if you go for the dsm editor and search for gdbc you will see it's used by uh, for example ibm privilege session recorder it's used by uh, what else i think by uh, oracle if we should search for oracle uh, okay here oracle you are uh, here log file oh here oracle again yes uh, gdbc yes so here for example ibm security identity governance okay so this is another one 
okay it's uh, but the the database of 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 it see the database type is oracle or db2 so in both cases you are using the gdbc so, so here where uh, you select the protocol uh, type so it's a uh, straightforward uh, thing so the first again the first thing is to create the log source type then you come create a log source attach the log source type to the log source and configure the protocol like gdbc or file or whatever with the different parameters and mainly it will co contain cred credentials so these are the piece of information that you need to discuss with the system admin or the application admin i need the credential to access your application uh, i i need to know where the logs are stored so basically we are talking here about custom applications where we connect to the application and pull the uh, logs from there so uh, do i need to connect to api top let me know what is the api uh, uh, documentation or let's discuss which uh, sql statement we need to uh, write uh, to get the logs uh, and so on so uh, the uh, log source type from here then the log source itself and attaching the log source type and the configuration of the protocol the log protocol uh, parameters uh, log source protocol parameters and then you go deploy the changes and almost your job is done now you come here and check you see the logs are started to come so every 15 minutes we should start seeing uh, logs coming here uh, uh so he here's the event name it's coming like custom new type one message this is the actually the log source type and this is the log source next thing it end user analytics this is the name and we have one log per line and here is the payload so now coming the task for uh, uh the task for implementing uh guys the uh the parser so we will select we'll stop first and then we we'll select couple of the logs and then click actions and dsm editor so you you have to select at least 10 or so so uh, like 10 20 so your parser is de definitive okay so select the dsm editor it will open for you this nice development uh, interface so here we start to write the so this for each line you have one uh, record here and it's telling you parsing field so we'll start uh, parsing the things here so i'll start with the time so i'll select here the time and we need to override the system behavior for the time for this property because if we check here guys the the time i don't know if you notice this i will cancel this if we not if you notice here the time is coming like um it's, it's not actually it's uh, accurate it's coming like a batch so if you open any one of this the log source time is coming actually uh the the same as a batch actually it should be taken from here it should be this time this should be the log source time okay it's 2021 but here it's coming the same time the script is run and uh, it's not uh, actually uh, accurate for so let's take a couple of uh, logs and again open the dsm editor okay and our mission is to make the logs parse it so parsing is currently failed so again we'll search for the time and we will override the system behavior and as we learn guys we look for any starting pattern so for example we will take this this okay we'll put it here and then it's highlighted in yellow as you can see and then i will put the, my capture group it will be between two places and open square uh, brackets and i will put negation for the double quote okay because actually i will end with again this one this double quote i will end with this double quote so i will put here double quote and this is just capturing one so i need asterisk so the asterisk uh, actually uh, make the regular expression works fine 
and now we have one capture group inside uh, uh, the de delimited by this uh, circle braces so it's highlighted in orange while the yellow is ignored but we just put it because we need to define the starting point of our uh, capture group so since we have only one capture group we will just tell him here in the format string dollar sign one so actually if for example you are uh, capturing something else after that like here this number so you have dot asterisk and then a number uh, between again circle braces you can put something like this uh, like capture one uh, group slash capture two group so in some cases you may need something like this if you read here uh, it, it gives you a good example about this uh, uh, yani the need for uh, using multiple capture groups so bottom line if you have one only just put dollar sign one okay the date format will be uh, like this so actually if you read about the date format it's giving here a nice example so here for the y the small y is for year the capital m is for months the small d is for day and the small h for hour small m for minute small s for second so here i have the uh the the format okay as you can see here uh for for the uh it's matching so i have the 2021 or the year is written in four digits that's why we put four y's the month is two uh, that's how we have two m's two capital m's the day is two d's our two h's two m's and two sec so in fact guys uh, the parsing will remain as failed unless we make uh two things uh, yani you, yes uh, you can make uh attribute extraction as much as you can but two things you should do to turn the parsing field to the normal status so first you need to make uh, to create event category and event id for uh, to parse actually event id and event category from the row log itself this is the first step after you did this it will turn to be parsed but not mapped the second step is to map so after uh, uh, parsing the event id and the event category you go to the event mapping and map this event to some event inside curator for uh, since this is a new log source so you will create actually a new queue id or uh, curator id and then map it so two steps uh, uh, يعني, is mandatory to make the log seen as parsed and mapped so you need to uh, uh, extract some event id from the log and some event category from the log after you do this this will change from parsing field to parse parse it but not mapped after that you go to the event mapping and create some queue id and map it to this uh, event id and event name that you have extracted from the log source since the query that i run was just get, giving me this information it's not enough I need to also extract the some ID from the logs and some uh, category so that's why I rerun uh, the script and this time I uh, added the ID and the status so this will give ID for the event and the status which is like the category so I run this and now I have new events here okay as you can see the new events have id and so i will take this for example okay so now you can see the log has an id and status along with the old one that we see before okay so now let's map the event id so we'll override the system behavior as usual but uh, please uh, guys note that uh, 
we will not use the whole id because if you notice next thing have a very unique id for every connection so uh, for sure we will not do that otherwise we will have to map every event or every connection and this is not the case so actually we will uh, notice here that all the connections are starting with 53 or 5313 actually however if you checked the whole uh, the whole uh, events they start with 53 maybe the 136 uh, changed as you can see here 143 but all are starting with 53 so it seems that the 53 is a, a unique identifier for the connection events however you can double check this with the next thing experts uh, uh, for that purpose for the logs that I have seen for the connections or are all of them are starting uh, at least for this uh, lab uh, environment so all starting with 53 and the category will help will help us to identify whether it's closed connection or it's uh, uh, open or established or whatever the other categories okay so uh, we will not take uh, all this number so I will take the starting delimiter as usual okay this one and then I will just take the first two digits this time I will not use the the one that we used to do okay and then these two digits only and then uh, D plus okay and that's it okay that will be okay for us I think so the event ID is 53 as you can see okay so for the event category we will uh, override again and choose status and then open brace open square bracket not uh, it will end with uh, double quote so not double quote and then close the square bracket asterisk close the circle place and then put the double quote okay and this will be again one capture group okay so now events are parsed but not mapped eight out of eight okay so i loaded eight and we can see here the event id and the event category remaining is the mapping so we go to the mapping we will create a new see here the event id the category is closed so choose qid we will create i will expand the screen create a new qid record for the custom new type i will choose the access and connection as a close success severity let's do it five or three is enough and then we can say uh, connection closed by next sync or next sync connection closed next sync connection closed save this is a QID created for us okay so we will this is the one we'll map to the event ID with 53 create so now all are mapped and parsed you can return to your parsing you can add other things as well um, so you can double check like for example the incoming traffic uh, outgoing traffic and so on so you can export this for uh, uh, for other uh, for yani uh, export the log source to use on other system if you want to get, uh, take this to other uh, curator 
okay so I think now we finish the DSM so let's wait for another batch of new logs uh, so I will make the filter log activity and I will make edit search and I will put the log source as next thing uh, IT analytics yeah this one search so let's wait till we get new batch of logs I'll stop the video now and we'll come back when logs start to flood again so guys I'm back uh, now we can see uh, new logs comes to the system and now it's parsed correctly I just stop the stream you can see here next connection closed okay uh, now the event name is is recognized by the system uh, the log source is the one the name that we give to the uh, log source we can see the low level category as connection closed success uh, the source IP is actually uh, extracted from the uh, IP that we gave to the remote host sending the logs and uh, here is the payload so if you uh, think other attributes could help you you can also add it. so uh, that's all for our uh, session so just to wrap up we uh, make integration between the 40 gate firewall into Curator simply by configuring syslog in uh, this direction and Curator was uh, able to automatically detect the uh, 40 gate uh, logs because it has the RBM as we saw uh, already installed by the auto updates and the second uh, scenario that we integrated a custom application which is NextSync not supported and it's not uh, available in the DSM guide uh, and we talked about the DSM guide and uh, we uh, navigated some um, pages inside it and uh, and we, we stressed that it's very important to be uh, uh, opened with you during the implementation you can share parameters from here with the system owners so tell them guys I need to make a GDBC connection please provide me with credentials provide me with uh, uh, the database names IP please open these ports the network guys please provide a service account uh, so I can connect and so on and uh, and and uh, we integrated with NextSync through the uh, API interface of NextSync uh, where we uh, just uh, yani make uh, wget call to the API interface get the logs stored it in FTP server that location and then uh, ingested the logs into Curator using the log file protocol and then uh, when the logs comes to the Curator first it was uh, first it was stored uh, directly to the curator database without parsing because uh, when the system this is a default behavior when the system is not able to recognize or to parse the logs it just send it to the database for compliance reasons so uh, if I return back in time like last three hours we can see the logs that were there uh, before this parsed logs so if we go back in time like page 8 here we can see the low level category was, was stored which means that the log was not parsed and it was just sent to the database of the system however after we develop the DSM uh, uh, now the logs become uh, available in the uh, or sorry it becomes uh, normalized and it's not just stored it's first normalized parsed and then parse normalized and then stored so let's just the final thing is to write the steps that we followed guys here so I will just show the step and then so first thing from the DSM editor so first step from the DSM editor 
you create a, a new log source type okay then from the log sources you create a new log source and attach or let's make it insert step attach the new log source into uh, attach the new log source type to the new log source choose uh, the uh, the protocol you have a uh, gdpc you have a uh, log file these are mainly for uh, pulling pull events okay uh, configure configure uh, log source parameters like the uh, remote host IB like the uh, file pass if it's file like uh, credentials you can say credentials so on then you deploy changes the changes after creation of the log source then we you do the uh, parsing and mapping okay so first let's say this is 7.1 so first you make event id and event category parsing then you make event mapping okay so event mapping is actually done by let's say create new qid okay and then map the event id extracted law step uh, from step 7.1 which is actually extracted from the raw log itself to the new QID and finally you return to the uh, your continue with continue with parsing other uh, log attributes so I think this is a very uh, definitive plan for developing your DSM. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It's a big uh, or long lesson, but it's very important. And I think you now become confident to uh, just work with any kind of, uh, of log uh, custom or standard. So DSM guide in one hand and your uh, video, this video in the second hand, you can do uh, very sophisticated integrations. So thanks for watching and see you in next video.